Hi, right, this is Nate 061 and today I'm coming at you guys with another video in the series Just Off That Road. Today I'm going to be talking about a location I recently visited in the Thousand Islands region known as Bolt Castle. It's one of the biggest draws in the entire area, and it's so massive that you can actually see it from some of the furthest points on the bay in the area. Again, I recently visited the area on in a trip to the Thousand Islands region, but not before passing through some other small towns including Oswego, New York. The castle itself is located in Alexandria Bay, and there are various ways to get there, but the way I took was Uncle Sam boat tours. Now my piece of advice to you is, if you don't have a ticket when you're on the boat, you don't need to worry because you can actually purchase them right on the island, but if you're hesitant or not sure if you're going to do it, just do it. I'm telling you, it's going to be worth it. When we were getting off the boat, we were unsure, we're like, is it worth it, is it worth it? But I'm telling you, it'll make all the difference for you as far as to how you remember your trip in the Thousand Islands. It's just one of the most different things you'll ever see as far as uh, architecture architecture goes. Um, even if you're only there with, like we were for an hour and a half, it still is worth it. I think it's like $10 a piece, so it's really not too bad, especially with all the renovations they've done over the years. The place is open from May to October, so it's either closed or it's going to be closed real soon. So if you haven't visited there, um, there's always next year. So I'll begin with the history of the castle, and then I'll talk of what it's like visiting today. So the castle was built by a man named George Bolt for his wife Louise as a Valentine's gift, Valentine's Day gift. Bolt was a manager at the famous Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York City, and he obtained his fortune through that mean. He moved to the U.S. from Prussia in 1864 and tried various professions, including being a kitchen worker as well as a rancher in Texas. But where he got his big break was in Philadelphia, where he managed a gentleman's club for his future father-in-law. Now, as far as building this castle went, he took no shortcuts. He went as far as to changing the original spelling of the island, which was H-A-R-T to H-E-A-R-T. And another way he showed his fascination with the shape and word heart is there are the shapes of hearts all throughout the island both in the structures and in the plants that surround it the family began visiting the thousand islands region i think which was the late 1890s along with their children and the castle was began to be built in 1900 however due to an unbelievable circumstances louise died in 1904 and bolt completely ceased all operations of furthering the construction of the castle he actually telegraphed to the island telling all the workers to leave and not never to return. And he forbid, forbid all of his family from ever returning, which was a huge tragedy to think the amount of memories they could have shared and would have shared if, the, if they went to the castle and lived in it as, like it was intended. Bolt himself died in 1916, though he continued with his family to visit the Thousand Islands regions prior to his death after the castle had been finished. Various people have owned the island since then, including a man named Edward John Noble, better known as the man who was once the owner of Lifesavers Candy. He actually inspired me to buy can Lifesavers recently when I was at a dollar store. Currently, the island's owned by the Thousand Islands Bridge Authority, who has done the re renovations you see today. When you first arrive on the island, there's a beautiful gar garden that awaits you, and they've carefully tended to it. And if you're hungry, they have a cafe where you can purchase all sorts of snacks and treats. There's so much area to check out, it's difficult where to start, but where we started was the pool, and I have to tell you, they don't take any shortcuts themselves, just like George Bolt. The pool was is still currently filled with water, and it's not water that's rainwater or water co covered in green algae. It's caref it's it's completely clean, and you can they actually play frog sounds to give it more of an authentic feel. Every detail to this castle is so well done, that it, it's almost hard to believe that they could ever do this. It seems there's no space on the entire property that doesn't have some decorative detail to it, including the, the ceilings, which are made out of wood. There's multiple structures on this island, and one including what was called the Children's Playhouse, which was intended to serve as a place for entertainment, and included a bowling alley, a library, a cafe, grill, and all that was on the upper floors except the bowling alley, which is on the, the bottom, and you'll actually see that in old technology they used to uh, service bowling bowling alleys near the playhouse was an area for boats to dock which alone was very impressive for one man to own one of the most interesting things on the island to me is how that 20 years ago that this island or this castle really was not as well maintained as it is today i'll link a video to a, 
another video that I saw recently that I could not believe the how how different it was 20 years ago. A man did a travel guide in the 90s and there was still graffiti and there wasn't the massive dome that you see when you look straight up near the staircase. The kitchen itself is filled from the floor to the ceiling with cooking objects and food and I can only imagine what it would have been like actually eating there had they been there. Even the maids themselves had a room to themselves which to a normal person was about the size of an average kitchen. For decades the castle was left in deteriorating condition and that's graffiti. The graffiti is evident of that. One of the most interesting things about history is how you can see how it's changed and there's graffiti dating as far back as the 40s when people dated their names being in the castle which I thought was incredible. The castle had only closed around 40 years ago itself so it's weird how fast people are trying to get in there. Uh, if you stay alert you'll be able to see all sorts of massive ships that are practically the size of cruise liners and you'll be you'll be shocked with what can fit on that little little body of water relatively Your photo there. You don't have to realize how massive you don't realize how massive this this castle is until you reach the top and you get a bird's eye view of the entire region. One of the most common things you'll see when on these boat tours or in the castle is people passing by on boat or across on land. Everybody waves to each other. It's the funniest thing. Everybody feels obligated. Not and it's not an uncomfortable wave. It's actually because people want to wave and see if they'll get a wave back. And that's exactly what I did when I was on top of the castle. I waved to one of the travel boats, tour boats, and I actually had a wave back, which I thought was hilarious. Uh, when you look across the water, you'll see a massive structure, another massive structure, which was the Bolt's Yacht House, and that's where they housed all sorts of. I was assuming would have been their boats. And that's, I think it's a separate fee of its own, so if you're interested in that, you can definitely check that out. I didn't do it, but I'm sure it's just as cool as the castle. So just before you make your way back to the mainland, uh, or what we did is we checked out the Italian garden they had there, and, in, you know, in no surprise that they had a, a great, uh, great detail to it just as well. Many colors and different flowers in there. Um, the boat returns every half an hour, so make sure you're alert when that. We were literally on the last boat off that island, which made it a little bit more fun because there was only a few people on the boat on the way back. But overall, I had a great time. I definitely would recommend it. I think it was one of the most interesting things, both historically and just as far as exploring goes. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching this video. I try not to stutter as much. I'll try to put these clips together a little bit nicer, and I hope you enjoyed. Please like, subscribe, and comment. I'll see you guys later. Bye.